Welcome to Bible in the Backyard at an undisclosed location in New York City. Bamidbar chapter 27. We are introduced to the Benot Tzlafchad, the daughters of Tzlafchad, whose father died and who make a request to Moshe that they inherit the land that he stood to conquer, or that he stood to inherit in the land of Israel, to settle in the land of Israel. And so Moshe responds that he doesn't know the answer, and he actually has to inquire of God to find out what the answer and the rule of law would be. Now, I imagine that throughout the journey in the wilderness, Moshe received lots of questions about which he did not know the answer. What makes this one different, that it becomes a question that is God-worthy, that he has to turn to God for the answer? That's a great question. Um, I don't know, all the way back in Exodus 18, uh, the system of judges had been set up that, and the rules were easy things would be handled by the judges, hard things would be brought, brought to Moshe, and Moshe would be the intermediary between God and the people. So I, I guess the simple answer is that it must have been a hard question. Uh, it may even be that there were a lot of other hard questions that we don't hear about that were addressed over the course of the time in the, in the wilderness. Maybe this one uh, wasn't necessarily harder, but is more important going forward. Um, but but I do think there's some the really interesting midrash that maybe pick up on, on the point that you're making. Uh, the Sifrei, the halachic midrash on this, on this chapter, says that God's answer is actually amazing. It says that God said, Benot Tzlofchad, the daughters of Tzlofchad are correct. They're asking a great question. In fact, in the Torah as it's written in front of me in heaven, there's no discrimination in inheritance between men and women. Uh, they're, they're right, but they're right in the Torah as it's written in front of me. And that's, of course, fascinating because it seems to, seems to say a lot of things. It says, first of all, that there is a, a Torah that God kept for himself yeah. that's Distinct. At, least, yeah, at least more expansive and maybe even different to some extent than uh, the Torah that was uh, transmitted to people. Um, but it also, it also means that in this particular case, there was, a, there was a law that was actually inaccessible to Moshe. There's no way Moshe could have known it. Hashem says, God says, uh, this, this is the way it's written in the Torah in front of me, but I never told you this. And so why it's not? Something. Why didn't God tell him? I don't know. He wonder he wanted Moshe to inquire? You know, there's this general principle that the Talmud says that the Torah is written in the language of humans, um, which I think some of the commentators take to mean that the Torah is uh, filtered through. Uh, it was given in a way that made sense to the people of the time. Maybe there are things that just couldn't be said at that time that are, are divinely true, but couldn't be say, said to the people in the wilderness 3,300 years ago. Hmm. And it's only the people who actually, who want it, who desire it, and ask oh, the question, and then that extracts it from the kind of ideal Torah, but that's it's when the people want it. That's a great formulation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.